Hello, everyone. My name is Eric K. Thomas, Editor-in-Chief of The Quintessential Gentleman, and today we are talking to Mr. Chip Baker, motivational speaker, educator, uh, life coach, author, all of these things this Black man is doing. We love to see it. How you doing, my brother? I'm good, man. Thanks so much for having me. I've been looking forward to this. Yes, yes, of course, of course. You know, it's been real busy. So I'm happy that we are able to get uh, on this call and to have this conversation. I'm super excited. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. Um, thank you for making the time. Are you still in Texas? Yeah, I'm, I'm in Texas. I'm in Conroe, Texas, which is north of Houston. Okay. Mm -hmm. awesome. I've never been in Texas before. I got to I got to get out that way. Yeah, we got to get you out of here, man. What you do would be <laughs> great. Of course, of course. Well, let's get in talking about what you do. Um, yeah. I want to first just kind of let you tell everyone, um, you know, your background and um, what it is that you do. So we'll just start with your background and then we can go into more about you know, what you're doing currently. Yeah, yeah. So I am Chip Baker. I'm a fourth generation educator, teacher and former coach. I come from a family of church folk and educators. That's with no S. So uh, <laughs> you said, uh, you know, that we, we, my folks have done church, man. So it's been great, yeah. great upbringing. Um, I am uh, an educator. I'm in my 24th year of education. I coached for 20 of those years. About eight years ago, I started my YouTube channel and podcast called The Success Chronicles. And what I do is I just interview people from all walks of life and share their stories for positive inspiration and motivation. And then about five years ago, I started, <laughs> I became an author, started writing books. Crazy. That still blows me away. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, as of as of a couple of weeks ago, I've released or been a part of 13 books and a few of those have been bestsellers. Wow. So involved in lots, uh, grateful for all of the opportunities just doing all that I can to make a positive difference in our world. Awesome. Awesome. So you said you were um, coaching. What sports were you coach, uh, coaching? Yeah. So I coached football and powerlifting. Okay. Powerlifting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, after this interview, I'm going straight to the gym. So <laughs> <laughs> I definitely can appreciate that. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, kind of talking about, um, you know, before we get to the podcast and mm -hmm. we get to um, your books, I want to know what kind of inspired you to kind of get into this particular lane. I guess it was just a natural space, man. I think we all are blessed with God-given talents and abilities. And the beauty of it is when we can tap into that, oh, man, that puts us in alignment with our assignment. And so I think, yeah. you know, organically, you know, from from how I was raised of my environment, my experiences, my relationships, my actions that I've taken uh, throughout my life, it's organically put me in a space to where I'm doing my thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like it, yeah. it's put me yeah. in the lane to where like I absolutely love what I do uh, every moment mm -hmm. of each day and I'm truly grateful for it. And and, and also, uh, you know, continuing to strive for growth each moment, each day too. So just my background, the people that I've been blessed to be around, and it just fit that I'm doing what I'm doing now. So let's talk about um, the life coach, right? The aspect yeah. of it, of feeling like, um, or or knowing that you can help to um, direct people's lives or kind of keep them, um, you know, just feeling positive and, and going yeah. through this thing called life, you know? Yeah. What are some of the the messaging or some of the things you wish that people would kind of live by um when going through this thing called life and specifically black men well i know um man first off you know, as, as you were saying that it made me reflect on uh some of the trauma some of the experiences growing up you know and now in the into mental health, mental health space you know people are looking at aces right your adverse childhood experiences and mm -hmm. so what we have to realize is that our ace can be someone saving grace. Hold on, let me give you that one again. What we have to realize is that our ace, mm -hmm. our adverse childhood experiences can be someone else's saving grace. And what wow. I mean by that is 
I don't care who you are. None of us are immune from growing through tough things. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Catch what I said, growing through, not going through. Right. And mm -hmm. what we have to do is when we are in those adverse situations, we have to make sure that we are aware enough to catch the lessons. Right. Because there's certain things within that that we see experiences we have to catch those lessons to say, oh, yeah, Chip, don't do that again. Oh, yeah, Chip, don't be around those kind of people. Oh, yeah, Chip, this was good. Keep doing that, right? And so we have to make sure that we are aware to pick up those blessings from the lessons so that we can take those and then use those to help other people. And mm -hmm. so I think what we have to make sure we do, I think first off is just look within to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always, you know, I always say self-awareness. Uh, people are not self-aware. Um, yeah. And I think that, you know, there's two things, you know, you could be self-aware, very much self-aware, but then the next part is, I know that you shouldn't be doing these things and you still do it. Cause that's another component of it, right? It's like, I know I shouldn't do these things, but I still do it. So it's how do you, you know, move forward past the, okay, I'm self-aware. And now how do yeah. I know, you know, not to do that? And for me, that comes into the therapy piece, right? Which, yes. you know, also therapy can help with being self-aware, mm -hmm. but it also can kind of help you. Okay, now that you know you shouldn't do those things, let's unpack why you're doing these things and why you continue to do these things that you know are not good for you or are not good, you know? Yeah, like they say, once you know better, you should do better, huh? Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, I love that too. And I think uh, you also made me think of, uh, I'm a formula guy, so if you don't mind, I want to give you a formula, right? Sure, sure. And, and I think please. that we are the sum total of our E plus E plus R plus A, right? Hold on, the, let me write sum, down. Come on, let's get it, baby. <laughs> okay. The, 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 the sum total of who we are is our environments, you know, the environments that we've been fortunate to be around throughout our life, right. uh, our experiences, you know, what things have we experienced, all right? Our relationships is the R, all right? What relationships do we have in our life or have had in our life that, that have helped us, you know, be the bridge to something that's been bigger or something that has held us back? Uh, and then the A is actions. Um, you know, what actions have we taken uh, to move us forward or, or hold us back, if you will? And I think that, you know, in our looking within to win, when we understand our E plus E plus R plus A, I think it provides a clarity for us. Mm -hmm. Like it allows us to, to have clarity on, okay, now I've experienced these things. I've been in these environments. I have these relationships. I've taken these actions. What have I learned from that? Right. And then once you take what you've learned from it, oh man, then you can see, like you said, with the, with the, with the healing therapy piece, Okay, how can, what do I need to do to improve myself? Yeah. So how do you find that people can identify all of those things, right? Because I think that as I, as I hear what you're saying, I'm trying to figure, okay, how do I understand that this is actually, you know, even, you know, the environment may be a piece of it where you understand, you know, kind of what yeah. your space is, but like even the actions, you know, like, or the emotions yeah. is like, how do you even, how do you really sit down with that and dissect those things to have more yeah. clarity so that you can then heal? That's a great question um, because really it's a whole lot deeper than the whole, I guess, 30 seconds of what, you know, I gave you for the yeah. formula, you know, like, sure. like you really have to take some time to really look within to win. So, mm -hmm. so for, for, so for example, um, I'll just tell you experiences. I'll just take right. experiences. Mm -hmm. So in my life, in my experiences, I was raised with a single parent mom. All right. My parents split, uh, separated when I was five years old. I was born in Dallas, Texas. We moved to my mother's small hometown. And in that hometown, it was like less than 5,000 people, right? So I was raised in a small town. I told you about my faith background, uh, educators, um, you know, all of those things. Fast forward, you know, I played college football. Um, you know, once I finished college football, I got a, a, a job teaching and coaching in a, you know, pretty nice size area uh, close to Houston. Right. So so you think about just in those things right there, all of the experiences that I've had. Right. right. So raised with a single parent mom. So I know what struggle is. Yeah. Like I, I know that I know the like being without. 
right? I, I know the mom on the hustle working three and four jobs just to provide. Mm-hmm. Like those are some experiences, right? I, I know what, what it's like to be disciplined and balance many things, but then still be expected to do all of those things great, right? right? You know, so right. so those are all, exp- I mean, I can go on and on and on about experiences that I've yeah. had in my life. So now how, how does that help? Okay, well, as a teacher and coach, as a life coach, I know what the pain looks like when you have voids in your life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I know yeah. what the struggle is when you tell me, oh, yeah, my mom is not home because she's working three jobs. I know that life, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so all of those experiences allows me to take, just like what I explained, take what I've learned from that and that now use that to help others. So that's just one aspect. That's just the experience piece. Right, right. No, I definitely understand. Definitely understand. And people have to, you know, definitely hit you up if they want to be able to really yeah. cycle in and have more of those conversations. Yeah, right. Uh, but sure. I love I love that we're having these type of conversations because even to your point, you know, um, the, the self-awareness piece, I think that specifically for black men, we have a challenge with yeah. um, processing what it is that we are not good at. Um, and I think about, you know, you th- you talk about what we're not good at, but also realizing that what are some of the weaknesses that we have? And in that black man, we can't be weak. That is that is not yeah. an option yeah. for us, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely understand that, but I definitely want to move a little bit into um, your book, specifically the effective conversations to ignite relationships. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I want to know. Well, first, I'll just tell me a little bit about that book and how did that come about so um when when I started and it's been a, a couple of years since I, re- I wrote that book but mm-hmm. um you know <laughs> going into it like I started my podcast connected yeah. with some great people I connected with this um you know pastor uh, from the DC area mm-hmm. like I interviewed him we hit it off we did some yeah. topic sessions man we yeah. were vibing he's like man you ever thought about like putting some of this stuff in a, in a book, <laughs> you know? And I was like, well, yeah, I thought about it. <laughs> right. Right. You know, yeah, it's a, like a bucket list goal. And so what I didn't know is like, he does, you know, he and his buddy, they taught people how to write and do self publishing and those kind of things. He had a, his friend had a publishing company. So, so we decided to co-author the book. Uh, right. That was our second book. We did growing through your go-through was the first one. And then right. effective conversation to ignite relationships was the second one. And so, man, we did a couple book tours with that. Uh, but that concept, we just took, you know, our experiences, uh, yeah. you know, with relationships and, and, you know, the fallacies and the good things. And we just put it in the book to share with people. Yeah. There is a big, uh, just on Twitter, I see constantly about uh, Black men need to learn how to communicate. Mm. When you see that or hear that, what do you think? I don't. Know. I don't know if you heard me take the deep, like the sigh. <laughs> mm. <I know. laughs> man, man, that that is deep. Um, and, and and I and I say it's deep, uh, because I I reflect on like the history. You know, I reflect on the history of of you know the sacrifices that people have made for us to be where we are today. Right. You know, and so like, you know, within that, just like we talked about earlier, there's lots of traumas, there's lots of things that, that, you know, sometimes we revisit, like you said, there's some things that have been taught, um, you know, you gotta be tough, you gotta be, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, like some of those things that have been taught that are lies, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and so um, I think the beauty of it is, you know, with technology, uh, with data now that's out, with you know, all of the opportunities that we have to connect and learn and grow, uh, you can see that uh, you don't have to be one way stuck in a box, mm-hmm. you know? And so like, like the only person that can hold us back is ourselves, mm-hmm. you know? And so like, when you, when you really truly understand that, that makes me happy. That makes me hold my chest up high because what you mean, I can learn and do and be whatever it is I want to be. <laughs> right right yeah 
<laughs> you know, and so like you and I are evidence and the research of that, right? Right. And so I think adult, that's what I think of uh, uh, when I hear that. But um, but conversation in relationships takes work, mm-hmm. right? And we have to be willing to put the work in. That's for it, anything. If you're expecting great results, hey, bro, you got to put the work in. And I think that for me, I wish, you know, even this whole conversation uh, yeah. is just the emotion aspect of it, right, for Black men. And being able to, you know, show your emotions, um, yeah. be able to handle your emotions and express your emotions. And then it's also the thought process of, you know, we think about the emotional intelligence that I think we yeah. don't have enough of. Um, yeah. And what I'm, what I want, what I'm hoping for is that more black and brown men will, and I, I want to say hoping for, I see it. We see it. I, you know, no yeah. one for me is no way that I can say from 10 years ago to now that, Black men are not becoming more art that that they're not becoming more in tune with their emotions and more about expressing them and being okay with expressing them because even to your point, you know, you talk about trauma um, and and sharing that you know somebody else's or your aces can be somebody else's grace and it's like mm-hmm. that's it too. Like you know, you're you being able to speak about the things you've gone through lets other people know that one, they're not alone, Come and on. two we can go through this, you know, this is how I did it. You may not do it the same way, but yeah. I got through this and you can too. And I think as black men, we need to be able to share that and have more of those conversations. Yeah. And and you you have to put in a work and I'm an acronym guy. So I think you have to be willing. You have to be open. You have to be responsible for, for your, your path and you have yeah. to seek the knowledge, the K, you know, you have to, like, it requires work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Um, okay, so on to the podcast. Uh, tell yeah. us about the Success Chronicles um, and how you started with that. Man, when you when you said that, it, I don't know if you saw, I had a smile on my face. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> that yep. made me smile a little bit, man. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm really I'm really proud uh, of it. Um, you know, not in, not in an an arrogant I've done this kind of way but in a man I'm grateful it's been a really cool journey kind of way Mm. you know and so uh, um, about eight years ago you know I come to a place uh, in my life man where I was kind of I was kind of kind of broken okay right and so how we talked about the experiences the traumas you know with some things that had happened uh, in my life. And so, uh, in my way of like, all I know is like when tough stuff happen, you got to go to work. You got to fight for it to make great things happen. Right. Like go to work, like, like make it happen. It's on you dog. Like, you know, so don't, don't look around. No, bro. It's on you. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so in my striving to heal and be better, Mm-hmm. Right. I started, I was intentional about having conversations with people about certain things. You know, I would ask, you know, how'd you do this? When you failed at this, how did you bounce back on this? When you tried to start this business and it didn't work, how did that go? Um, you know, and financially, if this didn't, I saw, I know this didn't, like, how did, how did you recover from that? And so I was asking people just, diff- how did you get to success yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. in your life? And so, man, I was having so many great conversations. And even before that, uh, you know, I had great conversations, but I got to a place where I was like, man, like, this is so good. I can't keep this to myself. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know? And so, man, just started sharing those stories, you know, people that was close to me. And then it's grown, Uh, you know, people started referring me to other people, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. to talk and highlight them. You know, I love highlighting people. I love, uh, you know, hip hop. I love, you know, you know, the culture. I mean, I, all of those things, yeah. I just kind of brought them all together and pieced it together. And now it's grown, man. I've, I've interviewed like my favorite author and, you know, people that I read their books and, you know, NFL players and, you know, big people that do social media movements. Oh, wait, yeah. that's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, just it's it's been cool 
uh, to just interview those people. And really, you know, people say like, what, what's your requirements? And like some people get into, oh, they have to be, they do this, follow. I don't really get into that. Like, will they talk to me? <laughs> you know, like, because I think we can all learn from, from everybody. And so that's what the, the cool thing has been for me uh, with the Six, Success Chronicles. And that's why I'm really proud of it because it allows for continued growth for people from all walks of life. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. And you know, what motivates you? You know, like I think we hear people all the time, um, at least in our space, you know, we're constantly speaking to other people and hearing about their success and how they're motivated, how they stay motivated, what inspires them. Uh, but not so many times we get it thrown back on us, but I would be interested yeah. to say, what is it that gets you up every morning or gets you to continue to do the things that you're doing? That's a great question. And it, and it really gave me chills in my reflection as you were saying it. And, and it. and it gave me chills because for me, it just boils down to this. I know I got people depending on me. Mm. And, and, and what, I, what I mean by that is, you know, in my whole life, my drive has been looking out for the people that I love, yeah. right? So growing up as an athlete, you know, I wanted to make it to the league to take care of my mom. Mm. right you know I didn't do yeah. bad things I ain't put bad things in my body because I wanted to be the best version of myself right so that I could have the 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 maximum opportunity that I could have to make sure that I ensured that right, right. and so it hadn't changed uh my same drive is now the people that I love but then now it's just gotten bigger all right yeah. because now you know my mission is I take care of people who take care of people mm. You know, yeah. and yeah. so that drives me every day knowing that, man, it ain't about me. It's yeah. bigger than me. Yeah. Like if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, uh, the people that I love and care about, they don't eat. And and that's unacceptable. Yeah. <laughs> like we we like eating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> For sure. For sure. And so um, I think that's what drives me every day. The fact that I know that. I have people depending on me and by my actions and how I move and what I do, uh, someone is watching that and I hope that it'll make a difference in their life. And you said you uh, just completed a book, right? Was that we said you just, just released one? Yes. About three tell weeks me, ago. Can you tell, us, tell us a little bit yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah. It's the impact of influence volume five. Okay. Um, and uh <clears throat> The book is uh, comprised of powerful influencers. That's mm -hmm. the series, a series, uh, okay. series. It's powerful influencers that is, you know, just sharing their stories, basically about what we talked about in this interview. You know, someone or something that has influenced them in their life, what they learn from it, and then you know, how are they using what they learn to make a positive impact on the world. Mm -hmm. What is the common kind of thread yeah. as it pertains to the people you've interviewed for the book the influencers? These influencers, what what's what's the common commonality of of all of those people? If you could say one thing, man, that's another good question. It's like you do this <laughs> just a little bit, a couple just, times, just a bit. you know, just a couple I, times I here or there, a couple times, yeah. <laughs> Every now and then, I might I right. might interview some people. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, man, I I think I think the common the common thread is none of us are perfect. Mm. I mean, you know, like like we all struggle. I don't care who you are, you know, race, men, lady, what part of the world you live in. Like none of that, like. Like none of us are perfect. We're all just striving to do the best we can with what we have. And so I think for me that that's been the common thread, which has really been cool because <clears throat> from that, everyone has a journey or path to get to their own personal success. Yeah. And each person's definition of success is different. And that's a question I ask in every interview that I've done. What's your definition of success? Yeah. Right. And I've heard so many different definitions, yeah. Yeah. but really the common thread is, hey, none of us are perfect. Learn from where you made mistakes, get back on your track, 
and, and, and keep striving to achieve greatness. Yeah. And it's so interesting that that's the common thread because kind of the nature of where we are in terms of influence or influencers are this idea that we are great. These people are aspiring to be LS. We are influencing people with the things yeah. that we do that are successful, yeah. that they like. Yeah. And then that yeah. boils down to, yeah, but we all just still trying to figure it out and still trying to make it. And we all fail, but we just keep going. So that's, that's it. Perfect. And, and I think that's a... Uh... Man, I heard this comedian back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. He was saying like, man, you know, I grew up in church, man. Uh, you know, it might even been Steve. Hart. I don't know who it was, but it was back in the day. Okay. But uh, he was just saying, man, my life got real when I realized that church people cuss. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, and so what that means is like, that tells you that life is real. Like yeah. the, the same people that we put on the pedestal, they make mistakes too. Yeah. And so I think that that's really encouraging because now that shows me that, okay, well, if they can, I can too. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, and then it's a cycle. Then now we achieve great things. And then we show the people that we're around, well, if he can, I can too. Yeah. And that's the, that's the impact of influence right there. Yeah. Uh that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So my last question for you is what can we look forward to from Mr. Chip Baker? Oh man, it's nuts. Let's go. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, man, I'm just, uh, I'm striving to have continued growth, um, in everything that I'm doing, um, striving to, to make more of an impact daily. And what I do, I know that it's bigger than me. So, you know, continuing to do books, you know, got some speaking conferences, you know, book tours. I've done some of those, but, you know, we'll be doing more of that, um, you know, <clears throat> more interviews to impact, uh, you know, yeah. striving to get out there and do some TV, radio stuff, interviews. Um, but all things making a positive impact on the world. Awesome. That's amazing. Well, Mr. Baker, thank you so much for speaking with us today. We really appreciate it. And um, you guys out there, make sure you tune in. Uh, make sure you follow him. You'll have all of his handles and stuff inside of this interview. Uh, we really appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate all you do and how you do it. So go get it. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, my brother. All right.